Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. So in today's video, I wanted to finally sit down and tell you guys about our green card interview experience and also how we prepared for the green card interview. In the first half of this video, I'm going to talk about what we did to prepare for the interview. And then in the second half of this video, I'm going to talk about the interview itself. So the interview notice came in about one and a half months before the actual interview. During this time, because I did not submit my medical, I had to go and get the medical uh, exam done. And I actually do have a video coming out pretty soon about the medical appointment, so be on the lookout for that one. So your interview notice will come in on a very similar piece of paper that USCIS typically sends to communicate with you. The interview notice will list out exactly where uh, and what time your interview is scheduled for. They will also list out the documents that you will need to bring with you. If you follow this checklist, you will most likely be just fine. So uh, this is the folder that I brought with me. It is a, a regular folder with different um, separated areas. And honestly, if you don't have anything like this, you can use a simple uh, folder like this. So I highly suggest using two of these. On the interview notice, you will see that they request that you bring originals of the documents that you have submitted with your initial application, such as the original tax returns, original W-2s, your marriage certificate, birth certificates. Uh, you will be asked to bring the originals. However, you're not supposed to leave the originals with USCIS. You only will need to bring the originals so that the USCIS officer can authenticate them. So all the originals you will put in one folder or in one area of your file. Again, keep in mind that you should not be leaving any original documents with USCIS at any time because they get rid of those originals and there will be no way for you to retrieve them back from them. And in the uh, second folder, I suggest that you bring documents that you want to leave with USCIS. All of the originals that you're bringing with you just in case you should still make copies of them. They may not ask for them, but it's a good idea to have it anyway. An additional copy of your marriage certificate, an additional copy of your passport page, visa page, an additional copy of your I-94, just in case they're missing from your folder. To avoid a request for evidence after the interview, you can give them anything that they're missing. You also want to include any additional evidence that you have acquired during the time between your initial application and the interview, especially most updated tax returns. That's extremely important by now you should have already filed most updated taxes we are in 2021 so you would want to bring your 2020 taxes as well as w-2s again the originals and the copies whatever you want to leave with USCIS you would want to bring any new photographs that you and your uh, spouse have acquired over time you would want to bring updated uh, letter from the employer stating that your sponsor is employed, updated lease if you have signed a new lease, pay stubs from your sponsor for from the past two months that are preceding the interview itself. Also, you know, if you have health insurance information, bank statements like that, you can include those as well. And I also made a small album like this, a photo album that we gave to USCIS officer uh, with our new updated photos. I included small personal items such as our first Christmas ornament as married couple, movie tickets from the time that we have spent together, birthday cards, uh, little notes that we have written each other. And actually the photo album is the first thing that the USCIS officer looked at. He uh, chuckled at a couple of silly photos that I have included, such as photographs from the time my husband and I celebrated our cat's first birthday. <laughs> Newer photographs, uh, should be put in the beginning of the photo album because it is new evidence. 
So that is basically how we prepared for the interview. If you follow the checklist, you will be just fine. Now let's talk about the actual interview day. Our interview was scheduled in the afternoon. So we came uh, about half an hour before our interview, but due to COVID, they don't recommend that you walk into the interview building more than 15 minutes prior to your actual appointment. We were not required to wear a mask anymore because my husband and I are both vaccinated at this point. So uh, you really are not um, required to wear a mask. The first thing is you will go through a metal detector and a scanner where you will put your personal items. So um, if you have a purse, if you have anything with you, you will, uh, in any documents you have, you will put on a scanner. Very similar, uh, like in the airport, uh, they made me take my shoes off uh, because I had high heels. So if you have flats or sandals, obviously they uh, probably will not ask you to take off your shoes, but just keep that in mind. Then we went straight upstairs to wait for our interview. As soon as you get to the interview area, use your um, appointment notice and put it in a special slot by the receptionist desk. You will see it so, and then you can sit down and wait for your interview to start. Hours started right on time uh, at 12.45, the USCIS officer came out and invited us to the office. Uh, the office was very, very small and also they kept the office door open as well, which personally made me a little bit uncomfortable. When you walk in, uh, the officer will introduce themselves and they will also have you take an oath uh, to say that under penalty of perjury, everything that you are saying, all the information you're providing is correct and that you're not going to be lying about anything. We were invited to sit down and we kind of just started to have a casual conversation. It's not an interrogation, it's actually very conversational and the USCIS officer will ask you uh, very simple, very generic questions, you know, oh, what are your guys' names? They will also then ask you to provide any documents that you would like to give to them. One of the first things that they will do is they will take your photo uh, as an immigrant and also they will check your fingerprints. One of the first things that the USCIS officer looked at, like I said, was the photo album that I have provided and little uh, additional evidence of our marriage. He then opened the medical exam envelope and carefully looked through that. He took out our file uh, and he started adding things to the back of it, any additional evidence that I have given him. We had very, very casual uh, discussion about, oh, where'd you guys go to college? And he wasn't even questioning us that much separately. He was just putting uh, questions out there and whoever wanted to answer it, our USCIS officer was a male and uh, my husband and him clicked pretty well. Personally, the USCIS officer seemed a little bit awkward with me. He avoided eye contact for the most part um, and just kind of wasn't super uh, casual with me. However, with my husband, uh, they were cracking jokes and um, everything seemed to be pretty, pretty casual. But I wouldn't say that he was overly strict with me or anything. He just seemed a little bit awkward. After some time, after finishing reviewing our documents, he actually asked me to step out and my husband remained in the office. So I had to go back to the waiting area. And I, not gonna lie, I got a little bit scared about that because I heard that, you know, if they separate you, it means that they're suspecting fraud. Uh, however, it wasn't like that at all. And basically my husband told me that the USCIS officer wanted to know if my husband was there on his own free will and also some factual information about myself and also asked my husband about our plans for our anniversary that's coming up. That was basically it. And after about five to seven minutes, 
he called me back in the office and at that point he asked me some of the similar questions that he asked my husband he asked me to say my full name and date of birth and my husband's date of birth he then uh, asked about my parents names he was asking about where i went to school uh if i'm still working at the place that i'm working at that i indicated that i was working at on my application you know basically he was asking questions based off the i-485 application uh, a lot of factual information obviously to cross-reference to make sure that you are not lying about anything so he then started asking questions from part 8 of form i-485 that start on page 10 uh, so these are questions um, that you have already had to answer uh, in your application in the first place they're very formal questions and at this point the interview may seem like it's getting very serious because the USCIS officer will ask you have you ever violated terms of your status have you ever been in deportation proceedings have you ever uh, been accused of criminal stuff have you are you planning to engage in terrorism acts are you planning to engage in money laundering and stuff like that so those questions are definitely very scary Scary and they can uh, seem like they're very very um, serious and you have to be serious obviously but answer truthfully he will go over and check all of those off and I forgot to actually say that he didn't tell us that but for most part I believe that the interview was audio recorded and so all of those go on your record and after asking all of these questions you will then be asked to sign form I-485 on page 17, part 13, signature at interview. And so um, that was pretty much it. And then uh, the USCIS officer asked me if I knew what the next step in the whole process was. And I obviously said yes, and I recited to him everything I knew, uh, to which he was actually very surprised because he said, oh wow, not many people know uh, what happens next usually and I didn't bother to tell him that I have been researching this stuff for the past however many months. Also the officer actually complimented us on the file and apparently when I was not in the room my husband said that the USCIS officer was very surprised by the way the file was organized and our cover letter as well. He said that uh, most applications that are not done with the help of a lawyer don't have a really good cover letter attached and our cover letter was very very professionally done so uh, that makes me very happy uh, knowing that the people that have watched my cover letter video and used it as uh, notes probably were just as well prepared as us which makes me extremely happy not even for myself anymore but for people who are or will be watching that video in the future and also my file organization video as well so if you are in the beginning of the entire process definitely check out those videos they didn't tell us exactly when we will find out about the decision. I personally felt like the interview went really, really well. Uh, don't try to over prepare and don't try to um, memorize answers that you and your spouse would uh, be asked because you never know. They may ask a lot of questions and they may not ask any questions at all. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is the guy actually didn't even look at the original documents at all. So I would say the entire interview lasted about 45 minutes. We were both very nervous in the beginning and you could tell but the USCIS officer was very kind and uh, friendly. They, they didn't try to trip us up but yeah, so the whole experience was not bad at all. I would really like to know about your guys' interview experience. Uh, what state was it in and how did it go? I hope that uh, you guys found this video useful. If you have any questions, again, reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. They're listed in the description of this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next videos. Adios!